Finite element analysis is a numerical method used to solve engineering problems using an array of mathematical techniques. The name comes from the fact that the method subdivides a larger problem into smaller, simpler parts that are called finite elements. The equations that model these finite elements are solved and assembled back into the larger system of equations that model the entire problem. That was the SparkNotes version of the definition of finite element analysis on Wikipedia. If that confused you, then stay tuned because I'm going to break this down into some easy to understand concepts for beginners. I've been doing FE analysis for probably around five years now, and what I've come to realize is that there are no good resources for newcomers. And it's really unfortunate because this is a really hands-on topic and you can't really learn it very well from a book. It's pretty much impossible, or at least it is for me. I'm not super book smart, I'm more hands-on. Most stuff's just very high level and there's a lot of equations and you're probably wondering what the heck is going on or if you're in class, your professor's probably spitting out equations and it's a little bit confusing and I'm going to try and fix that. So as an example, say, say you have a tree outside. So here's a tree and next to that tree is you, your realistic person. So what is a tree outside? A tree, you have a shape of the tree. Uh, you have the different components of the tree. So you have the branches, the trunk, and the leaves. And all these different components of the tree respond differently to the environment or to you. So if you go up and you pull on the branch, the branch will bend. Or if you touch a leaf, you can crumble the leaf. But if you go kick the trunk of the tree, you're going to break your foot. Now, why is that? It's just because the materials are different between the two and the shapes of them are different and how they respond are then different. So the trunk of the tree is made out of hard wood while the leaf is made out of much softer plant material, right? So breaking this tree down into even more basic components, you've got the geometry of the tree. So you have the general shape and then you have these materials like I mentioned before. And within the FE modeling world, these two things are really important. So the geometry can be files that just represent the geometry, like STL files or um, CAD files, if you've heard of CAD. And the materials are then represented in something that's a little higher than this topic right now, but let's just consider that you have a filler that fills the geometry and you can give that filler uh, different material properties. So you can give it the properties of steel or the properties of rubber. So in the FE world, you can give this tree the properties of wood, like an actual tree, or you can give it properties of rubber. And if you actually give the tree properties of rubber, then it's going to bend like rubber. So that's a benefit in the FE world is that you can just manipulate things however you kind of want to and see what happens. This filler is what we call a mesh. So if you hear the word mesh, we're talking about this finite element tool that fills the geometry of an object. And this mesh is made up of different types of what we call elements. These elements can be one dimensional or two dimensional or three dimensional. And within each of these dimensional elements, you have different types. So, so you can have pyramidal elements, you can have block elements or just squares or beam elements, all these different types of things that can be used in their own specific applications. So you can use beams to represent like a pole. You can use shells to represent like a coating over something. And you can use solids to represent something that's going to deform through the object like this tree. So moving away from this tree application, we can relate this to a more real life uh, application. So let's think of a car crash. Okay. Companies have to pay lots of money to do yearly car crash evaluations and evaluate how safe their vehicles are. And to do this, you have to instrument these cars, these dummies, and the dummies themselves are expensive, and it takes all day to instrument them. Then you crash this car that's worth thousands of dollars, and they do this to make sure that the cars are safe. And within this, there's just a lot of money. What you can use FE for is you can make a model of a car, which pretty much every automotive manufacturer in America has done. And they take these car models and then wreck them through FE. And what you can do is instead of wrecking a physical car, you can wreck the model of a car and see how the car responds. So the first part of finite element analysis is developing a representative model of what a real life object is going to do when it is met with a specific boundary condition. 
So the benefits of this are that once you have the model, it's much cheaper to use than doing physical tests. It's much faster. However, you do sometimes need higher amounts of processing power, so you need some pretty powerful computers. And uh, applications in the field of finite element analysis include, like I mentioned, automotive manufacturers, automotive crash tests, civil engineering, like bridge tests, weight bearing tests, and even in the world of human body models, which is actually what I work with. And um, it's really complex. And it's pretty much limitless in the field of finite element analysis is growing and it's a good field to get into. Um, however, there is a large learning curve and this is just a really basic level intro to this and I'll be making more videos kind of getting into each uh, element of FE analysis and I'll be doing some tutorials into how to actually get these geometries, make these geometries, then mesh the objects and then run the simulations. So there's like three parts to it and each part is pretty complex. So. I've been doing this for a while now, but I'm not an expert by any means. Um, I hope that this was helpful in some way, and I hope that I can continue to help out any beginners that want to get into this field because I'm really passionate about this field and I really like it, and I think it's really enjoyable. So I'll be posting new videos upcoming, and thanks for watching.